everyone. We wish you a Merry Christmas <laughs> and a happy birthday, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> we practice this, you guys. <laughs> We've got a great program for you. Yes. So just sit back, relax, and absorb all this great music today. Jonathan and Christy Sawyer are with us, and she is a marvelous woman of God. And Jonathan... In fact, she has a women's ministry called River Dwellers. River Dwellers. Yes, huh? but Jonathan is a minister of music in Fort Myers, Florida at First Assembly of God under Dan Batser's church, and we are so thrilled to have both of them. And uh, right now we're going to a choir that is going to knock your socks off. <laughs> God with us.
<laughs> Wonderful. Beautiful. Beautiful. Oh, my. Well, if you haven't figured it out yet, this is our Christmas program. And yes. you just are going to be blessed by all the music if you haven't been already. And uh, it's so good to have Jonathan and Christy with us. Thank you. And, yes. Uh, she's going to be speaking. Yeah. And uh, you're, you're going to be the Dan Betzer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> no pressure there. <laughs> but first, we have a mini concert coming up with Jonathan that we are so looking forward to. We're going to take a few minutes just to talk about Christmas yeah. and traditions and, and what it means to you. I'm sure you do have traditions. Oh, yeah. or, or what do you do with your family every year? Well, one so thing, we, I have saved every single ornament that my kids have made, every piece of macaroni <laughs> that's been glued together. And that was um, kind of a hard thing for him to, he likes everything to be perfect, like this tree you have in the studio. <laughs> so when I start hanging the construction paper and the macaroni up every year, um, that's just it's so special and my kids are grown but they still love to see their when they were three-year-old ornaments hung on those tree on the tree so that's yeah. one of our traditions well they like pulling them out one by one and, and we talk about each when one it has a memory and yeah. the memories and oh, all yeah. of that yeah <laughs> yeah what about cooking do you bake anything I do we do Christmas cookies and I cook a big Christmas dinner and a big appetizer night on Christmas Eve so we do a lot of cooking she's understating that she starts cooking days and days before <laughs> and and then it's cleaning up for days and days oh, after no. but it, she's an incredible cook and that's one of the things the yeah. kids look forward to most yeah. oh. Christmas Eve has it certain things that she has to cook and then Christmas uh, Christmas Day is another you know tradition and so it, yeah, yeah it's great I'm sure you do the same Oh, the yes. Same thing. I was just telling, <laughs> I was just telling that Susan, one of our camera people, she does many things around here. This is just one of them. In fact, she decorated all oh, this. Oh, wow. Beautiful, stunning. She did a great job, yeah. But I was telling her, I have a country Christmas downstairs, a tree, because I have to put, and my kids are older than yours, you know, <laughs> 41, five children, you know, 38 too. But I still have things from the, from construction paper, oh. Christmas trees that were laminated with their little picture. Mm -hmm. I have their handprint that mm -hmm. I wouldn't take anything for. So that has to go on the tree. Yes. And of course, when they come, they're not coming for Christmas this year. They're all coming for Thanksgiving. Oh. Oh, but you know, Christy and I used to dip pretzels every mm. year at Christmas. We would dip pretzels into white chocolate. Yep. And just some other things, but I, like you, I love everything associated with Thanksgiving yes. and Christmas. And I don't mind the work. I don't <laughs> mind it at all. I've already put my Thanksgiving tablecloth <laughs> on the table, yeah, to get ready. So I love it. I just, if you start days ahead, mm -hmm. anything you can plan ahead and do ahead, it helps. So yes. you don't have to be yeah. nervous. Just watch the Thanksgiving Day Parade, but we're here to talk about Christmas. <laughs> 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 but <laughs> same way at Christmas. I just love it all. Yes. Really decorate. Do you bake? I do bake. She does. I do. I am, um, and I have all the scars and burns to <laughs> prove it. So um, I do. I'm not. I don't create my own recipes. I follow a recipe really well. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, you've written two books already, but this is your latest book. Yes. Arise, my love, and this is a 365-day devotional. Now, I have gone through this book, and I thought, oh, wow, this is awesome. This is so good. I would love to read that, like, don't burn out. <laughs> Do you believe this? Awake, uh, true friends. Uh, it's just a, a, an incredible book. Thank you for writing it. It's plagiarized, though. <laughs> oh, goodness. <laughs> She's got the Word of God in here. It's all the Word That's of God. Right. Yes, That's right. That's right. You've got to put the Word of God in Amen. here. Amen. So Amen. thank you for writing it. This would be a great Christmas gift. For yes. anyone. Yes, it's available yeah. on our website, and uh, and I, I we we did a concert the other night, and I even wrapped, had some elves help me wrap some of them in bows, and people love that because they're taking them as Christmas gifts yeah. to give, and you can even bundle it with one of my CDs. You know, they're normally ten dollars, but I throw that in yes. for five dollars. You get both for twenty-five. It's a great Christmas yes. gift, and, and the CD <laughs> is just piano music, so it goes right along. Yes, it does. You know, with and the I'm devotional. I'm so glad you said that because Jonathan has got some awesome. Some anointed <laughs> CDs. He does. He does. Well, we're ready. Well, I think we have a couple more minutes, don't we? <laughs> so we can. <laughs> we have a couple more yes. minutes. So praise God. 
Bob, what's your favorite Christmas memory? Uh, that's a good question. I think I got a pony <laughs> one wow. time. Wow, wee. Wow. <laughs> <Christmas. laughs> we lived up north. Yes. But well, I got a little pony, and uh, that was beyond what I could imagine. <laughs> wow. And uh, you know, we've had so many great Christmases. And, and you had snow at oh, Christmas, didn't you? Yes. yes. What I would have given to have mm. snow at Christmas. <laughs> what I would have given to not have snow. <laughs> So here we sit in Florida. <laughs> here we are. <laughs> oh, I've heard the stories that so you had to go out and, and walk a pretty long way yeah, in, in deep snow to feed horses. Deep snow. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. You poor thing. Yeah. <laughs> you poor thing. <laughs> Maybe tough. Christy's from West Virginia, so living here in Florida, we've had to adjust. And I'm from North Carolina, so not frigid, but cold winters we're used to, and a little bit of snow. But So it's been an adjustment going and getting a Christmas tree from a parking lot under a tent with uh, in shorts and flip-flops. <laughs> yes, quite an adjustment. Yeah. And to see lights around palm trees. Yes. Yeah. That's been kind of, yeah. kind of different, too. Yeah. Well, we're really excited about why we're even celebrating Christmas. Yes. It's all about Jesus. Absolutely. That's right. And we're here because of our Lord and King. That's right. And they say he was born on December the 25th. I'm not quite sure about that particular date, but it is a time we celebrate his birth, and we're so glad to do it. Absolutely. Amen. 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 And we're going to take a break right after the break. Music by Jonathan Sawyer. <laughs> What hope we hold this starlit night A king is born in Bethlehem Our journey long we seek the light That leads to the hallowed manger ground What fear we felt in the silent age Four hundred years can he be found But broken by a baby's cry Rejoice in the hallowed manger ground Emmanuel, Emmanuel God Son of God, here born to bleed, a crown of thorns would pierce his brow, and we beheld this offering, exalted now, the King of kings, praise God for the Halloween manger ground.
You know, aren't you thankful today that God is with us, right beside us? That's what Christmas is all about. We watch the news and it's so much turmoil, so much chaos. But in the middle of all that, Christmas comes December 25th every year. And I hope you'll pause today and just remember that the peace of God reigns this season for you. All you have to do is ask for it. All you have to do is trust. He's right there. Let him wash over you with his peace and with his joy today. But I was reminded of this song, and it's my prayer for our world today, for our nation today. Let there be peace on earth. the most coming together and celebrating the real reason for the season but maybe you can't be home this Christmas you can be there in your heart and in your dreams so I sing this for you tonight I'm dreaming tonight of a place I love even more than I usually do. And although I know it's a long 
road back I promise you I'll be home for Christmas You can count on me We'll have snow And mistletoe And presents under Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home for Christmas if only my dream. you're serving in the armed forces, maybe you're working across the world somewhere, and it's not possible to get home by plane, train, automobile, but a sometimes all it takes is a phone call or an email or a text message or maybe just a dream or a prayer, but I pray that in your heart this Christmas you find home, because home is where the heart is, and Christy and I wish you a merry Merry Christmas. Christmas Eve will find me where the love light gleams. I'll be home. For Christmas, if only in my dreams, if only in my dreams.
This song just brings us back to the remembrance of what Christmas really is all about. Hope. Hope and light. Starlight shines, the night is still, shepherds watch from a hill. I close my eyes to see the night when love was born. Perfect child. Gently waits A mother bends To kiss God's face I close my eyes And see the night When love was born Angels feel the midnight sky they sing Hallelujah He is Christ our King Emmanuel Prince of Peace Love comes down for you Heaven's gift, the holy spark to light the way inside our hearts. Bethlehem, through your small door came the hope we've waited for. The world was changed forever. When love was born, I close my eyes and I see the night when love was born. Two people in the same family are so talented, <laughs> but it's true, they are. And right now, we're going to Christy to give us a message of faith, hope, and love. Thank you so much, Bob and Jane. Merry Christmas. You know, it's supposed to be the ha happiest time of the year. That's what we sing. We sing those songs. But, you know, for some, the Christmas season can be the very opposite of that. It, the season can highlight our loneliness and lead us into depression. It can lead us into feelings of hopelessness. And maybe that's you today. 
Maybe that's how you feel. Maybe you feel as if you have no purpose. Maybe it looks like that you have lost everything. Maybe you feel like you're being hit this season from every side. Maybe you feel like there is no hope. But my dear brother and my dear sister, the Lord has sent me here today to tell you this, to remind you from Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Plans to give you a hope and a future. We've been singing about hope and speaking about hope this entire segment. And that is the message that I believe that the Lord has sent me here to say to you. So I put, if I was going to put a title on this little message, the title would be, For Unto You This Day. That means that there's something for you. The Father has something for you today. It's a gift that's been giving every day for over 2,000 years. And if you'll receive it, it's a gift that you can have right now and tomorrow and forevermore. For unto you, this phrase we're familiar with, it comes from Luke 2, 11, where it says, for unto you is born this day. It goes on to say, the angel said, don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that is meant for everybody, everybody worldwide. A savior has just been born. I ask you today, do you need a savior this day? The Bible says that for unto you, a savior has come. And it also tells me that this gift is for everybody. It's for everybody worldwide. And this gift is Jesus. And if you're feeling like you are surrounded or that you are covered by darkness, I have really good news for you today about this Jesus. Jesus tells us in John 8, he says, I am the light of the world. So if you follow me, you won't be stumbling through the darkness, for living light will flood your path. So for unto you this day, not just once, not just yesterday, but this day and every day, just for you, God sent his son, just for you, Jesus is your light in the darkness. And he promises you that if you will follow him, you will have the light of life, that you won't stumble through the dark, you will have his living light, and what's interesting is that before this for unto you moment happened in scripture, this time before Jesus was born, it had been over 400 years since there had been light in the world. It had been centuries since anybody had heard from the Lord. That time period is actually referred to the 400 years of silence. No word from God, no light. That, my friend, is darkness. That is hopelessness. And I know how that feels. I had a very specific season in my own life when it seemed that all my hope was lost. Everything that could go wrong had went wrong. Everything that I could lose, I had lost. I was walking with the Lord. I was serving the Lord. But you know, that doesn't always guarantee that life is going to be easy. I had lost my marriage. I had lost the freedom to see and to be with my 13-year-old son. I had lost my business. I came close to losing my house. I had no money in the bank and bills were continuing to pile up. And I was suffering with crippling, life-stopping migraines. My life was a mess. My mind was a mess. And I fell for one of the biggest tricks of the enemy of my soul. I became distracted and I became isolated. And I shut myself off from everyone, including God. So it was just me and the devil having a real hootenanny in my mind. He was having a heyday, feeding me lies, lies about the situation that I was in, lies about myself and lies about God. And he was whispering things to me like, what kind of God would allow all of these things to happen to you? He must be punishing you for all the mistakes that you've made in your life. And he was saying to me, you weren't even supposed to have been born. It's an accident that you're even here. Just like your birth mother said, you are a mistake. You are an inconvenience. My birth mother had tried to abort me three times before I was put up for adoption. But I'm here to tell you that God had another plan for me and he has a plan for you. And then the devil came in for the jugular with the biggest lie of all. And he said, there must not be a God at all. And I began to believe that. If there's a God, how could he allow all of this to happen to one of his children? So this must be punishment. But the more I listened to the wrong voice, the more I believed the biggest lie, that there is no God. 
And when I came to that brilliant conclusion, my world became completely dark. I actually considered taking my life because if there's no God, what's the point? I had cried out to the Lord, but I wasn't hearing his voice. And so I was trapped in the chaos of darkness. And I just wonder if that's how the people felt in that 400 years of silence before the birth of Christ. Did they begin to believe that there was no God because they weren't hearing from him? Had they lost all hope? I know I certainly had. But you see, there was this one day this one day, and I had even more bad news if that was possible at work. And so I just left, and I got in my car, and I just went home. And I went into my bedroom, and I threw myself on my bed, and I sobbed into my pillows. And they were blue and white pillows, and you'll need to remember that part of this story. I sobbed uncontrollably into my blue and white pillows. And as I did, my eye caught sight of my Bible on the table that was beside me. And with a very bad attitude, I must admit, I reached over and I grabbed that Bible and I opened it up with disdain. What can it have to say to me? And how could it even be real? Because there is no God, I said to myself. But when I opened it, I opened it up and it landed on Isaiah 54. And the very first line in that scripture says this. It says, sing, barren woman. And I was like, well, that's certainly true because I am definitely the barren woman. That is true enough. But it goes on in Isaiah 54 to talk about how the Lord was going to bless and the Lord was going to enlarge and the Lord was going to increase. And it went on to talk about how the Lord was going to redeem. And to be honest with you, I wasn't very interested because how could I be if there is no God? But there was this one verse that caught my eye. And it was this one verse that was the beginning of my own for unto you moment. God gave me my very own personal for unto you this day moment. My very own, I sent a gift, Christy. I sent a savior just for you moment. And just like all those 2,000 years ago, he was about to send a light into my very real darkness. And you would think that it was a verse that was very positive, an uplifting verse. But it was this verse. It was Isaiah 54, 8, where it said, I hid my face from you for a moment, but with everlasting kindness, I will have mercy on you. And I'll tell you, there was no other word that would have reached me in that moment because God is so personal. It was in the acknowledging that he had been very quiet in my life. And I just want you to know today that sometimes he is quiet because he's teaching us something. Sometimes he's quiet because he's growing us up, because he's preparing us for the next part of our story. But also sometimes he's quiet when we allow other things and other voices to distract us. And when we turn to other things and other people instead of him, it makes it that much harder to hear from him. Now, I'll tell you, that verse did not change my circumstances, and it didn't put me on top of the world, but what it did was it gave me resolve, and it was in that moment that I told the Lord this. I said, Lord, if you never do another thing for me, if you never bless me one more time, if you don't help me out of this mess I'm in, I still will praise you. I will still love you. I will still trust you and I will still believe in you. And when I made those dec declarations, I still had no money in the bank. My marriage was still over and I still had no contact with my son and my business was still closing. None of that had changed, but I had changed. My atmosphere had changed. My darkness had to flee because the light of Jesus had stepped right into it. And I want you to know today that when Jesus steps into your situation, chaos has to bow at his feet. Chaos has to leave. And my life started coming back into order the darkness in my mind, it had been illuminated. And so I was able to make sound decisions led by the Holy Spirit. The weekend after my for unto you moment, a friend paid for me to go to a women's retreat. And I really didn't want to go. I was still feeling kind of numb, but she made me go. And I ask you that question today too. Who are you surrounding yourself with? Because I pray that you have friends that will carry you, mat and all, and tear a roof off of a house to get you to where Jesus is. I'm so thankful to have those kinds of friends in my life. 
And so at the retreat, the speaker gets up and she seemed really rattled. She couldn't seem to get her message out. And she ends up closing her binder and she says, you know, I can't go any further in this message until I speak what it is that the Holy Spirit is telling me to say. And she said, I don't know who this is for and I don't know if it's going to make any sense, but the Holy Spirit would have me say to one of you, I have collected every single tear that you have ever cried into those blue and white pillows. I have never left you. I have been with you through each and every moment and each and every trial. For unto you this day, he sent a savior for unto me this day. I think about the people that were living in that day when Jesus was born. And I always like to put myself in those stories. And if I'm in that story, my ancestors have told me each generation about this long, dark silence. And I imagine that even the atmosphere looks dark and without any hope. But then I imagine that moment that they got the news. And I wonder, did it take them a while for the truth to settle in? There had been no light. There had been no word. There had been no hope. I had no hope. But the moment that I finally surrendered, when I finally admitted there was absolutely nothing else that I could do, when I finally dropped all the plates that I had been spinning, when I finally silenced all the voices so I could hear the voice, it was then that the light of the world himself stepped right into my darkness. And so I say to you, my friend, it doesn't matter if it's been years since you've had hope. You may think that you're watching this program randomly, but I tell you the truth. I know in my heart that God orchestrated this moment just for you. And this is your foot for unto you this day moment. And just like the angel of the Lord spoke those words over 2,000 years ago, those same words are for you today day, my friend. He said, don't be afraid. I have for you good things, great joy for unto you this day, a savior is born, your savior who is Christ the Lord. Do you know him as savior today? Perhaps you're living in chaos and you need his peace this holiday season. He longs for you to come to the end of yourself so that he can take over. He sent me here today to remind you that he has a hope for you and a purpose. He has a for unto you this day, every day. Merry Christmas. Thank you, Christy. Oh, wow. What a message. Mm. You know, it's really something how personal God gets with us yes. crying in those blue and white pillows. Yeah. That's a personal God. That's someone who loves you so much. He knows everything about you. That's right. And Christy, I want to thank you for bringing message of hope. Yes. A message of life. A message of salvation. And it's for you today. Now, I know you probably are saying, well, there's no use for me. No, he knows the That's color right. of your pillow. He knows everything about you. And so I just want to give you a message of salvation. All this Christmas and all these things that we're going about doing, it's for a real reason, because we're right. so happy of what Christ has done in our lives. That's true. And he'll do it for you. Yes. He'll give you hope and peace and joy that you cannot fathom. But he'll do it for you, and all you have to do is open up your life and say, Lord Jesus, come in today. Come in to stay. We love you, Lord. Would you say that today? Lord, I believe that you know about my blue and white pillow because you know everything True. and I know I'm speaking to people right now
especially at this Christmas time, it's very difficult for you. But God is on the throne. And he knows your every plea. He it's knows fine. your every heartache. He's the lover of your soul. How true. And all you have to do is say, come into my heart. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Yes, amen. He'll be as faithful to you as he was for Christy years ago. The one thing about God is he is faithful. He is That's faithful right. to all who call upon his name. He loves you so very, very much. And today, yes, we would like to pray for you. And, sweetheart, I'm going to ask you to pray for those that are watching that have no hope. Yes. And maybe a little hope is coming to them right now. Yes. Father, I just thank you for all of those that opened their hearts up and they asked you, Lord Jesus, to come into their heart. And Father, I ask you in Jesus' name, now go before them and make the crooked places straight. Bring the valleys up. Bring the mountains down. Father, I ask you to restore relationships. Father, I ask you to go out and create a job for those that are jobless, crying out to God. Some are believing you asking you, Father, to make a way where there seems to be no way. But Lord, you are the way maker and you are the one that is more than enough. So we thank you, God, because you're the one that provides. We thank you for all that you're going to do. And we thank you for those that have just come into the kingdom. And Father, I ask you to give them a hunger and a thirst for the word of God. Father, I ask you to surround them with friends that will support them, love them, lift them up, encourage them. Father, I ask you to break off any relationship that is not of you and bring in friendships that are. Father, we thank you for each and every one that has given their heart to you. And now we thank you for the turnaround and the breakthrough in their life. And to you, Lord Jesus, be all the glory, all the praise, all the honor. You deserve it, Lord. We're just so excited for these that have just given their heart to you. Amen. Yeah. And now uh, Jonathan is going to come and sing for us a closing song. Mary, did you know? That your baby boy would one day walk on water. Mary, did you know that your baby boy would save our sons and daughters? Did you know that your baby boy has come to make you new. This child that you delivered would soon deliver you.
calm a storm with his hand. Did you know that your baby boy has walked where angels trod? And you kissed your little baby, you kissed the face of God, oh Mary. Did you is the grave. 